Alright champions, we're back with that cute little Farfisa thingy. Amplibox 8. Let's get stuck into it. Having a first look. Now I know we go on and on about tax soldering, but everyone goes, ah, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. It works fine. Well, it doesn't, because we've got a broken ground on that cap there. Now this cap is a 68 microfarad. Now you can't just go throw on capacitance and an EZ81, because it'll shit the bed. However, it's got a 220 ohm resistor there between the first cap and the, uh, the rectifier output. So that will damp down any uh, inrush or current pulses that would uh, destroy that valve otherwise. So it's probably gonna be fine. And there's that resistor there still installed, so that's good. We'll just check that in a second and check that it hasn't drifted or gone open or anything. So the biggest challenge with this one's gonna be getting down to those caps underneath all the stuff. Like everyone loves a rat nest until they gotta work on one. Uh, over this side's not too bad, but we've gotta get the big the chassis iron down inside there, which has got a pretty big tip on it. So all the girls say. And uh, unsolder that chassis solder connection down there, which is the earth for that cap. Now it is tempting to start thinking about redesigning stuff in this, but um, as I said, we want to keep it pretty well original, so it's uh, authentic to its design. Just having a quick glance at the thing, you could do stuff like, um, yeah, remove that. Remove that resistor there, which will uh, possibly give it a, a bit better response. So I'm going to try and work on this thing in situ because unscrewing it looks like a massive pain. You've got flat blade screws down hidden underneath there. I don't know how to get a screwdriver up to them. You have to sort of jam it down in here, work around these blocks. The screws going down that way too. It's all because of the strange angular design of the thing, which looks very cool, but has complicated the design somewhat. So it's a pretty simple amp. I think this, we're not going to gain a lot by removing it anyway. I, I can get to the valve sockets and clean them and stuff just by flipping the amp upside down. I might just chuck a light and a mirror under there just to check that all the connections to the transformer look okay. Uh, so let's get to work. Alright, so having removed all the electrodes, we've got a bit more room to get in there and clean the dust off the chassis now and uh, get down inside and check uh, the resistors for drift, blah, 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 blah. Clean up the solder joints uh, before reinstalling some new caps. champion so after lots of cleaning scrubbing and uh removal of corrosion and dust and dirt and some reconstruction uh, she is ready to test so i'll just run you through what i did so everywhere there was a ground connection i just uh cleaned up all the wiring there there was it was sort of excessive length on on the leads of all the components so i shortened them up a bit just to stop stuff from flopping around in the breeze Managed to get down inside there and replace that filter cap down the bottom. They were 16 microfarad across the board. I just upgraded them slightly, bumped them up to 22 microfarad. New bypass caps. First stage uh, has no bypass cap. Second stage does. And the tremolo oscillator does as well. And hiding down inside there is the bypass cap for the EL84 output valve. And most of these resistors were like ridiculously within tolerance. Like that... 2.2k down there was like 2.200k <laughs> I've never seen that on an old old amp so very high quality resistors evidently even that main dropper resistor there was within tolerance as was the bias resistor for the output valve I've gone with a 30 microfarad main filter cap there it was 33 on the schematic but you know what's a couple of oofs between mates the 68 that was in there was not a real good idea for an EZ81, although it is damped by that resistor there, so probably not the end of the world. Uh, but we'll see how it performs with the pretty well close to the original value capacitor there. So a lot of the work was just in cleaning the chassis and redoing the uh, the grounds, getting the big, big Mamba Jamba iron out and 
re-soldering them and removing the flux, all that kind of stuff. Now I removed the voltage selector and replaced it with a fuse because this thing originally had no fuse, which is not good. It's probably got a fuse, a thermal fuse in the transformer, but I don't know. There's no way of confirming that. So to be safe, we put a, uh, a fuse in place of the voltage selector because the voltage selector was pretty dodgy anyway, and it was set to 220 volts, which I think caused some damage, which I'll show you shortly. So there's the little voltage selector. Um, my main concern was that was one of the mains connections there, and this screw was like, installed about, oh, say there, in the chassis. So it was pretty much wanting to touch that at the best of times. And that's your, your primary <laughs> of your power transformer there. So that concerned me greatly. Um, the other issue was uh, at the best of times, the contacts were showing about five or six ohms where it should have been close to zero. So I'm not confident that I could have taken this thing apart without destroying it. Um, so we just locked it into 240 volts. It came in set to 220 volts, uh, which I think damaged the rectifier valve. So as soon as I fired this thing up, I didn't notice that. See that bend right there in the plate? I didn't notice that. Uh, I just cleaned and straightened the pins and everything and got the majority of the schmoo off it. I was hoping for the best. But you can see that's really bent there. Uh, that's that's gotten very hot and you can see some discoloration on the glass in that area the plate in this area as a result has sort of buckled and now it's it's touching the cathode inside um, you can actually sort of make out there where there's a a little uh, a little hole in that white cathode coating material in the middle you can see that little gap in the middle there where the cathode is there's a white coating on it and there's little areas where there's no coating it's showing the shiny actual cathode underneath. If you look carefully there you can see how misaligned that little tube in the middle is with the plates. It's actually touching sort of on this area here, a bit hard to see but I saw a spark out of the corner of my eye as I was firing it up and it's hard to tell sometimes where the spark came from because it's in your peripheral vision. Uh, but then it happened again when I happened to be looking at the valve, so so unfortunately that beautiful little mini watt goes in the bin. And interestingly, you can see on that JJ's there, in that same area, they've got like these reinforcement little pieces that actually firm the uh, firm the plates up a bit, whereas the mini watt didn't have that. So uh, sometimes new valves are a little bit more resilient than old ones. So anyway, we'll put the JJ's in there and battle on some. Now I did end up removing the chassis from the cabinet because I wanted to uh, inspect the other side where the transformer is as well as just make it a bit easier to clean those valve sockets because there was some wax build up on that one there. Possibly running down from the wiring or that component. That component seemed to be covered in wax. That uh, resistor there, I mean. So it just gave me a chance to look at the old, whole thing and just give it a good clean and get all the dust out of it. But man, trying to get your uh, your hand up there to the those flat blade screws in there that are mounted on an angle and then you got this block in the way. That was good fun. A few swear words were uttered. Believe it or not, I know. Shocking, right? So there's the beautiful rainbow of uh, unused primaries down there. And we've just hardwired it to 240 volts. And the other reason I took the chassis out was to enlarge that hole in order to get a proper strain relief in there. It just had a plastic grommet there before with a knot tied in the in the cable, so that was no good. So now it's got proper strain relief and a new mains cable. And you can see the dedicated earth there, longer than all the others. So if that cable ever does get pulled out, which it won't because that strain relief is tight as hell, but the, uh, the earth will be the final wire that's still connected after the uh, active and neutral get ripped off. So we've got a new 500 milliamp time delay fuse in there. I'll monitor the current draw on startup and just check that that's not uh, approaching its rating too closely. Uh, and just check the, the the current on idle and just make sure it's about, say, 50% of the fuse rating or less. So another look back at the schematic. And the first thing that sort of jumped out at me was they seem to have made every attempt in their power to make this the darkest sounding amp known to man. So the first thing I noticed was this 2.2 uh, nanofarad cap at the output of, uh, well, V1 
A according to this, but on the actual valve, that's uh, V1, B, um, to ground. So it's dumping a lot of high frequency there, a lot of top end. And then you've got this uh, cap across the primary, the output transformer, uh, a uh, 4.7 nano over there as well. So that would be um, damping any sort of real bright distortion coming from the EL84. Uh, so this cap didn't look in good shape, so I removed it and I thought, let's leave it out. Let's see what it sounds like. Um, and this one over here, I'll test it now with that still in place and then we'll compare uh, after I've removed it and what the difference is. <laughs> I think we can safely leave C106 out uh, with no major complaints. I know I wanted to leave this one as original as possible, but I don't think anyone wants an amp that sounds like it's got a blanket lying over it. Uh, not generally, anyway. Um, the blanket can always be put back if they want, but I think it's a lot clearer now. It's got a lot more detailed, airy top end. And it's quite a beautiful little uh, clean tone there. Of course, like a lot of single-ended amps, you push it, and it starts to break up in maybe not the most graceful manner. <laughs> but uh, just on the verge of breakup, it's it's really nice little little future. So I think they'll be very happy with it how it is. In all of these years of working on valve amps, I'd never get tired of looking at them glow. I could watch it all day. Maybe not all day, but you know. <laughs> Alright, so we've got a purring. Very minimal hum for a single-ended amp. And uh, we got it biased to about 90% without too much trouble. It must have been running way hot on the 220 because uh, right now on the heaters at the 240 setting, we've got about 6.5 across the heaters, so that would have been pretty high before uh, changing it to the 240 tap. But all is well and it's sounding good. Removing those caps hasn't introduced any oscillation or anything, so I'm pretty happy about that. I think we can safely leave them out. Perhaps there were voicing options for, I don't know, accordion. I don't know what an accordion signal looks like when it <laughs> when it meets an amp, but um, the fact that there's a a 100k grid stopper on one and a 47 on the other maybe means they were doing everything everything they could to um to damp down any uh, top end issues. But I think now it's a lot more voice for guitar, which is what this is going to be used for. So happy days. So uh, in addition to that, we also put some uh, lock washers on all the jacks there, removed them. They just had aluminium washers before, which offer some sort of uh, springiness, I guess, being a soft metal, but um, they don't bite in like an actual star washer. So now we've got them on uh, all the jacks as well as the pots, which which it had as it came in. I had to put a washer there for the fuse holder because the, the main selector switch had about a 14 mil or 15, 16 mil hole. So that, I think, ended up being a 14 or 13 mil probably probably half inch probably should have measured it before i started talking on video huh <laughs> but uh yeah all the contacts on the jacks turned up okay gave them a quick burnish and they're all good no intermittency at all now and uh given a little bit of um percussive maintenance it hasn't it hasn't shown any uh intermittency at all so here's a look at that cap that was across the primary of the output transformer it's actually a glass tube, and you can see it's filled with like, I don't know, it looks like a tar-like resin. And there's bubbles in there and stuff. Um, the ends are pretty cracked. I think you could actually get like a guitar string up there, no problems. So uh, she's no longer hermetically sealed, and there's no way I'm trusting a cap that looks like that. So out she comes, and I think we can get away without having a cap there at all. That'll open up the top end a bit as well. So all the covers are actually solid timber, they're not ply. You can see the saw marks there. And they've got these reinforcement strips on them to uh, to help stiffen them up a bit. So we'll chuck that back on and we'll we'll do some, uh, some playing through it. You can suffer through my playing. It's everyone's favorite part of the video, watching me fumble around on the guitar. All right, so uh, there was some crackling, very low level crackling that um, occurred as a warmed up for a while I just had it on the bench just idling for about an hour and uh, 
we tracked it down to some fluctuating DC coming out of that valve there from the tremolo drive to the grid of the L84. So we re replaced that cap and that tamed that down. Uh, there was a little bit of uh, clicking coming from the tremolo. Um, that has disappeared now. I can't seem to recreate it, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but it's putting out about 5 watts now, which is about all you could expect given the conditions it's running in and the EL84. And it's sitting at about 90% dissipation. Alright, so what started off as just a replacement plug ended up being the new cord, uh, three conductor cord with a th um, ground pin on the on the new lead, so we had to ground the chassis, a failed rectifier valve, a full recap, uh, removal of that cap which looked pretty sketch, <laughs> the uh, replacement of that leaky mustard which is pretty rare for a mustard but it does happen. Uh, removal of the cap that's made it sound like it had a blanket on it, removal of the unsafe uh, main selector switch and hardwired to 240 volts, uh, a fuse installed and lock washers installed on all the jacks. So it just goes to show when someone asks for something just like a plug replacement straight away I'm thinking oh no <laughs> what are we gonna find but now we can rest easy that this thing's going to be a, a good little amp for the foreseeable future.